everybody! Welcome to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, we're back in the kitchen again today doing some more preserving. We've had a fantastic garden this year. The tomatoes are all done and I'm done preserving what we need for the next year for tomatoes. So we have preserved a year's worth of diced tomatoes, tomato juice, tomato sauce, salsa, ketchup, and barbecue sauce. And that is just about it. That's all I want to see for tomatoes again until another year from now. But I'm feeling so blessed about how abundant our harvest has been, how blessed we are to have so much food saved up for the next year. So things are kind of winding down in the garden, which has allowed me to refocus on what I need to still preserve before winter comes. Now, earlier in the summer, we harvested our potatoes. We harvested 93 pounds of tomatoes, which is not one year supply, but it's a pretty good amount for us. I'm pleased with that. Initially, I did a bunch of canning of our potatoes. You can see some of the jars here. Potatoes here for us in the Missouri Ozark, they don't do well long term, just, you know, like potatoes in a root cellar or in a cold storage. Uh, they just get soft and they just don't last really well um, just out like this or in a cellar. So we need to do something with them. I've decided not to can any more of the potatoes. I've decided to go ahead and do some different freezing projects with the remainder of our potatoes. Now we've eaten a lot of them. Uh, I've also froze some already. Uh, all we have left is in this half of a bushel basket and I'm hoping to get a good chunk of these processed and into the freezer today. So I thought to bring you along, maybe you'd like to learn how to preserve some of your potatoes in the freezer. Now you may notice that my voice sounds a little bit strange. Last week was the first week of school and wouldn't you know it, one of the girls brought home a cold. And so I have a cold. I'm actually feeling pretty good. I think I sound worse than I feel, uh, but I am doing my best to take care of myself along with getting some work done around here on the homestead. So uh, thank you for prayers and for your concern because I know a lot of you watch out for me and your concern. I appreciate that, uh, but I'm doing fine. So I am going to get set up for the first potato project that we're gonna work on today. we are starting off with today is to make O'Brien potatoes for the freezer. Now O'Brien potatoes are really pieces of potato mixed with onion and pepper. I use O'Brien potatoes to make my special creamy cheesy potato bake. Normally I make those for special occasions but I may break them out a couple more times a year, so I probably make that maybe four or five times a year. Even though I can easily and relatively inexpensively buy O'Brien potatoes from the grocery store in the freezer section, I have all of that ingredients from the garden right now, so it makes a lot of sense for me to just use our homegrown ingredients and get them in the freezer for the few times a year that I make that dish. I have weighed out about two pounds of potatoes. The first thing we're gonna do is dice these potatoes and then we're gonna blanch them. I have my blanching pot all set up. It's heating on the stove. And the reason you blanch potatoes and really most other vegetables before you put them in the freezer is it stops the enzymes that naturally occur within those fresh veggies. It stops them from working even in the freezer. You'd think, oh, once you put something in the freezer, all oh, those enzymes won't continue working. Well, they do. Those enzymes can affect the color and the texture of your end product after you cook them, after you pull them out of the freezer. So these potatoes, we're gonna chop up and then we're going to blanch them to get them ready for the freezer. Thank you. 
The O'Brien potatoes that you get from the store in the freezer section, the potatoes are about a half an inch by half inch. And so that's what I'm trying to do with these potatoes is to make those pieces about the same. That way the cooking time is very similar between what I get at the grocery store and what I'm making at home. The nice thing about doing your own potatoes though is that you don't have to peel them if you don't want to. If you want them peeled, go ahead and peel them, but I, I don't really like to spend all that time peeling the potatoes and then all that fiber is still in our meal. So all of these potatoes, I'm just gonna chop up in these half inch squares and I'm gonna put them in a pasta basket like this. And we'll use this basket in the pot. There, I have the two pounds of diced potatoes in my pasta basket. This is actually the perfect amount for me to blanch, probably the most I would want in one of these pots. So now that my pot of water is boiling, we're gonna go over here and blanch these potatoes. So the blanching process is really just like parboiling or pre-cooking, but really you're not cooking it all the way, you're just kind of half cooking it. And the length of time that you cook the vegetables really depends on how big the pieces are or how thick they are. Because these potato pieces are really pretty small, we're only gonna boil them for about two minutes. When you're blanching, you put your vegetables in, and once the water comes back up to a boil, that's when you set your timer. So we'll put these potatoes in. I'm gonna cover them back up. And every couple minutes, I'm going to look underneath there to see if they're boiling. And once they're boiling, I'll just set a timer for two minutes, and then I'll take them out and put them in some cold water to stop cooking. Let's just give them a quick stir. Not boiling yet. Oh, now they're boiling. I'm gonna set my timer for two minutes. Now, if this starts boiling too much, then I'll just take off the lid for the remainder of the cooking time, just so it doesn't boil over. It is potatoes, after all, there's a lot of starch in there, so sometimes that can make a lot of bubbles and they'll kind of boil over, so we'll just watch that. Our two minutes is up. Turn that off and then we're gonna take them out of here and put them in the cold water. Now you can use ice water if you'd like to. Um, I never have enough ice on hand and the small amount that I do have on hand I want for a cold ice water. So I just put these in cold water and they cool down in just a couple of minutes. Okay, these are nice and cool. I'm just gonna put them in the sink and let them drain really well while I get our other ingredients ready. Now you'll remember that I said O'Brien potatoes are potatoes, onion, and pepper. So I'm going to dice up one pepper, uh, a sweet pepper, it doesn't have to be green, it doesn't have to be a certain color. I'm actually using one of our red roasting peppers. This is called Ajbarski. It's actually a red roasting pepper, it's amazing, but I don't have a bell pepper in the house and it's raining, so I don't wanna go into the garden and this will taste just fabulous. So I'm gonna dice this up and get this ready. This pepper is absolutely gorgeous and it has a lot of seeds. So I'm going to be saving these seeds, drying them so that I can use them next year. So like I said, we're just gonna dice this pepper into small pieces and get it ready to go with those potatoes. The other beautiful thing about making your own homegrown and frozen O'Brien potatoes is that you can choose how many peppers and how many onions go in. Maybe when you buy them from the store, 
you think, oh, there just are not enough peppers in here, or not enough onions, or maybe you would like less. This way, it's 100% up to you. Just look at how gorgeous and meaty these pieces are. Oh, I love these peppers. Okay, same thing goes with the onion. We're gonna use one whole onion. It's probably a medium onion, I would say. We're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna dice it up. She's crying from the onions. That's a strong one. Okay, the onions and the peppers are all set. It's just time to put it all together. Okay, I'm using a gallon size freezer bag. I'm gonna grab my potatoes. We're just gonna dump them in. Hopefully it's as easy as that sounds. Yeah. Dump them in there. We're gonna put the peppers right on top. And the onions, just put those right on top of the peppers. Now if you want to mix these up, you can do that, but I don't think it's necessary. I'm just going to try to get as much of the air out of here as possible. I'm going to label these with a marker. And I'm going to put them in the freezer just like this. Because I'm going to be using them just like this, the whole bag at one time, I'm not worried about them freezing in a big clump. I'll just bring them out the night before or thaw them out in the refrigerator 24 hours before I need to use them and they will be perfect. These are going right in the freezer. This is for one gigantic recipe of my cheesy creamy potatoes. I am ready to start our second potato project. Now the O'Brien potatoes that I put in the freezer, I actually already have five bags of them. So that's my sixth bag. I'll have six meals worth of O'Brien potatoes in the freezer. Now, you may have caught that I didn't blanch the onions or the peppers, and you could have done that, but I just don't think that there's a huge difference. They're gonna get cooked down anyway, and so that's why I didn't blanch those. But the potatoes, the consistency of them, and the color will really be yucky if we didn't go ahead and blanch them. Okay, so our next potato project we're going to be doing french fries for the freezer. Now we have invested in a nice french fry cutter. This is actually a commercial grade french fry cutter and we bought that because we plan to do this quite often from now on. We have had a less expensive or lower quality french fry cutter in the past and it actually broke we tried to use it broken, but it was very frustrating. So we did invest in a nice restaurant grade uh, French fry cutter, and we will put one in our Amazon shop if you wanna take a look. So this makes things really easy, this French fry cutter. Now I do wanna tell you that I'm gonna do quite a few of them before I start blanching them. In the waiting process, potatoes can start turning brown on the surface. So an easy way to prevent that is to just keep them in a bowl of cold water. So I have put cold water in this big bowl and as I cut them into the french fries, I'll just put them in the cold water until we're ready to put them in the blanching basket and everything will be just hunky-dory. Okay, so we are gonna move these potatoes over. We don't have giant potatoes left because we've eaten most of them for baking. We've picked through them. so. I've done my best to find the best sized ones. Uh, bring this over here, um, suction cup it. Bring it over here so you guys can see what I'm doing. Press down on the suction cup feet. Put your potato down in here. 
push that toward the end of the, the potato and push out and it should fly out with all of the french fries cut up. Look at how fancy and handy that is. Let me show you that again. It's so fun. Actually, that was the very first time I've ever used that. It is super slick and way better than the cheapo one we had. Okay, let me show you guys up close how this works. So put the potato in and push the handle. Look at how easy that was. And these potato pieces are fabulous. Look at the blade is um, 3 8 inch holes that it makes or little squares. So that is just perfect. This is just so fun. Isn't that good? That's what my grandma would say. Isn't that good? So let's just keep going with this a little bit. You know, in situations like this, I often say to myself, do I really need this gadget? Do I really need another gadget for the kitchen? Yes, I do. I need this gadget because, are you kidding me? How long would it take to chop all of these potatoes into french fries? These will be french fries from our garden. The way we want them cooked, if we want them fried, we can fry them, which we don't normally do. If we want to bake them, we can bake them, which is what we normally do. And this is fun! Okay, now I've got a nice pile. I'm going to put them in my bowl so they don't start turning brown. Oh, you guys, we have sweet potatoes coming out of the ground soon. We haven't harvested them. Going to be doing this. Well, I was having so much fun that I got a second bowl and did more fries. So now I'm heating up the water again. Once that comes to a boil, we'll start blanching these french fries and getting them ready for the freezer. Put those in there. Now because these are also very thin, we're only going to let these blanch for about two or three minutes. We're just partially cooking them before they go into the freezer. Well, I've gotten through all the fries. This is the last batch here. And I'm putting these also in a gallon freezer bag because for the most part, we're just going to be using these like all in one meal. So this will be one meal of fries, this one, you know what I mean. So I'm not worried if they're stuck together because I'll thaw them out before we use them. I know in the grocery store when you buy uh, french fries, you know, they're frozen. But um, in this case, I don't mind thawing them out and then they'll cook faster, okay? But if you don't like this idea and you don't like that they're going to be all clumped together or if you want to be able to cook them while they're still frozen, you can what's called flash freeze them. So I put down a piece of parchment paper on a, a baking pan and I put these fries relatively in a, a single layer. This is one batch. Uh, they'll probably, they would probably do better if they were in a single layer, but I had too much. So, so you could then put these in the freezer just like this until they freeze all the way. And then you would break them up quickly, break them up and put them in a bag and then they'll be a lot more loose. So if you wanted a bigger quantity in one bag and then you just dump some out to use them, uh, you could do that. But this is the way I'm going to do it. Feel free to do it this way. Okay, there is one more project that I'm going to do with these potatoes. I'm going to use most of the rest of them, I think. We'll keep some out. Uh, to use still fresh while they're still good, but that will be the third potato project and we'll basically um, Get rid of all of the potatoes that we grew well preserve all of the potatoes that we grew um, And that will be awesome and then I can move on to the next preserving project. There's always another preserving project. So Let me get this all cleaned up and we'll do number three Okay, here we go last potato freezer project and this is really uh, the easiest out of all three of them. Now, 
several things that we love to do with potatoes um, over the winter especially because it requires the oven or you know something that heats up the house well we like to have big potato chunks in like beef stew and other you know stews like that we also like to make roasted potatoes in the oven my favorite recipe for roasted potatoes in the oven are the Lipton onion soup potatoes where you mix big chunks of potato like this, you know, big chunks with one packet of Lipton onion soup mix and then some oil. You just mix all of that up and then you heat it in the oven, I think at 350 or 375, I'm not sure. The instructions are actually on the back, back of the Lipton onion soup box. They are so good, you guys. That is one of our family's absolute favorite way to have roasted potatoes. So between stews and soups and roasted potatoes like that, we go through a lot of potatoes. So this way is going to be easy for us to just take those big chunks of potato out of the freezer and use them. So these potatoes, which is almost all the rest that were in the basket, I'm just going to cut up into larger chunks, keep them in the water until I can put them into the blanching water. We're going to blanch them a little bit longer because these chunks are bigger than the other ones. So I'm gonna probably blanch these for about four minutes and uh, we'll cool them down, drain them, and then we'll also freeze them in freezer bags. Now this time I'm gonna pretty much pack the freezer bags full because the chunks when I freeze them, they will still, they'll still kind of be, well, they'll be easy to break apart is what I'm trying to say, okay? So I'm not super worried about them being a, in a big glob. I'll just be able to smack the bag on the counter and um, enough of them will break apart for me to be able to use and then I'll let them thaw or just put them right in a soup or something like that. So this is the third option that you can do with your potatoes. Uh, to put them in the freezer for your future use. Well, that does it for my potato projects for the day. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me in the kitchen today. And even if you have not grown your own potatoes or grown a bunch of potatoes this year, you can still use these techniques because the holidays are coming and the grocery stores always have fantastic deals on potatoes right around Thanksgiving and right around Christmas. So keep that in mind and stock up your freezers. You guys, make sure that you're hitting the subscribe button below if you are liking the videos that we're putting out. And the best way that you can help us here on the homestead is to share our videos on all of your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless.